Hello and welcome. Vincent coming to you from Colorado, sending you good vibes wherever you are. If this is your first time visiting my channel, welcome. And for anyone who's been practicing with me before, welcome back. Certainly can't wait to get back into the studio, into the gym doing live classes. Until then, here we are. Today we're just going to look at three poses and we're going to work with props, our yoga block and our yoga strap because a lot of times we need these. Some of us may have hurt ourselves or others say, I'm not good at yoga because I'm not flexible, I'm not stretchy. Well, most people don't start out that way, I didn't. They didn't invent yoga because there was a target market of flexible people out there that they thought would like it. Everything today is marketed to some sort of target audience and you're going to see some yoga marketed that way. But Yoga as a discipline, a physical and psychological discipline, came about 5,000 years ago as a way to Calm your agitated heart, calm your agitated mind, bring yourself to a state of emotional balance through the use of physical postures. But today we're just going to do three. Three that will help calm you down and can even be used to help you get to sleep at night. These are generally regarded as safe for most people. We use our props to help us with any constraints we have with our flexibility or mobility. Help protect ourselves while still getting the benefits of the pose. First one's a classic. That's pretty easy. We want to have our strap and let's have our blocks handy. They're just good to have no matter what. No matter how good a shape we're in. Our Janu Shirshasana which means knee to head pose in Sanskrit. It's a very simple one. We're just going to tuck the right foot into the left thigh. And we're never locking the knee even as we extend the leg to its full length. If we're caring for a specific knee injury, the block can help you protect yourself with the block under your thigh. Now you can push down on the block with your thigh. You can even put it behind your knee and push down upon it because it's going to keep the knee joint from fully extending, protecting the ligaments, which is important because we're going to take it right to the floor. Now, you're not being graded on whether or not you can come down all the way down here and do it fancy without the block. We're seeking to fold forward, pushing the stomach down into the thigh, getting a good powerful stretch in the calf, in the hamstrings, in the glutes. We can even lift the thigh up against the stomach if we need to. Now what's telling us if we need to? We want your spine to relax. We don't ever want to be tugging on the spine to get into the position. These can stretch and scream and so can these. As long as we go slow, we'll stay out of trouble. Where your strap comes in is if we're not able to reach here comfortably, we want to be comfortable. Wrap the strap around your foot right below the toes. The ball of your foot can push against that strap. We can keep the block under here. We can use a pillow or a smaller cushion. As we develop mobility here, it's going to become easier. We might be up here right now, that's okay. Each breath, we experiment with a bit of forward movement. 
taking it slow so we can make long breaths. Shape your lips like you're blowing out a candle throughout the inhale and the exhale. That's an easy way to regulate your breath so you can coordinate your breath with your movement, make it nice and smooth. We're taking it all the way forward. We're never forcing the back to stretch in order to get down here. If we're not ready to get down here, that's okay. We are always in control when we come over. But your spine should be relaxed. When your body does come into a forward bend, it'll be as easy as this strap. coming over my arm. We're not forcing any extension in the back. You get to a position where you're feeling a good stretch, but you're not feeling tugging right behind the kneecap. Just stay in that position and focus on your breath. For some of us, counting 30 seconds in the pose works. For others, it may work better to just count. Count your breaths. You're going to feel your body relax. You may need to pick up your left sitting bone and bring it backward as your body settles in. Let's come on up, exhaling to help with the lift. Extend the right leg, tuck the left foot in. Positioning our block if we need it, our block or our pillow. Reaching toward the foot, we might need our strap. Use the strap. Push the foot against the strap. Pull back equally with the hands so that we're not flailing wildly. We want to be in control. Stay with the block if you need it. We walk the hands gradually down the strap toward the foot. We're not required to get all the way here today. This is going to take a while. Enjoy the journey. Observe how the pose helps you relax. What we're working on is getting us relaxed in here and in here. This is calming your first chakra. That's the energy center based in your thighs that region of your body that governs your survival mode. And when it's out of balance, we're like, oh my God, oh my God. And we're worried about everything. We become irrational. We worry that we're about to starve even though the fridge is full of food, etc., etc. This calms, mellows, and balances that first. Chakra says, Things are okay right now. I can chill down. And as you continue to do this pose, you may get to where you want to hang out for a minute or two on each side. Because of its calming power. Find your full expression of the pose. Make little adjustments. I'm going to move the pelvis a little bit. I've got to bend the knee a little bit. i got to move my shoulders a little bit. Do those little checks and observe what's going to make you more comfortable. Observe how it makes you feel in your heart and in your mind, in your gut. Don't judge yourself because... I'm not as fancy as the person in the magazine or in the video. Don't worry about that. Next one presents a bit more challenge. Have your blocks handy. The three angle forward bend, also known as Trang Mukai Parapashi Motanasana, is how we say it in Sanskrit. My first training came from Iyengar Yoga, where Every student learns the poses with their Sanskrit names. It's okay if that's not your thing. 
gonna roll out to the right hip. We got the right leg extended. Now folding this left leg. Let's wait before we hurry to sit up straight. I want to make sure this left thigh can spin in the hip socket. We can shift the pelvis side to side. What we're being careful of is not to make any twisting in the knee. To make sure this foot back here is active, it needs to push down in the floor a bit. Kick that foot down into the floor. You're going to feel your quads. Top of your thigh, you're going to feel those tighten a bit. As you tighten those quads, we're kicking the floor. Let me give you a side view. It becomes easier to roll your thigh this way, stacking the thigh over the calf, reducing chances of twisting the knee. Now here, where the block comes in, we're going to spin around once again. Blocks are always good for enabling us more reach so we can lift on up. We can lift right up, slide that block right underneath. And then our second block, we put behind the knee, and that'll prevent the knee from opening too far and back, preventing hyperextension. We want this block here if we're going to sit on a block here. That's how we keep the pose safe. So I've got my folded leg here. Now it's much easier to spin the thigh in the socket, keeping it comfortable, protecting that knee joint. We come forward like we did in our Janu Shirshasana. Stomach leading ahead of the chest. When we fold forward, it's with a relaxed spine. So we're never tugging that spine to get down here. It's not a contest to get down here. It's got to feel good for you. Not to please anybody else. I know that might sound selfish. We all have those pressures in our culture to be selfless. And I'm not criticizing that, but we have to take care of ourselves too. I'm gonna reach forward with our strap. Same thing, this ankle's strong. I can push against that strap and pull back. We're not competing. The foot and the, the arms are not competing. They're cooperating. Okay, set your amount of force so that it's equal to my amount of force so that we can maintain the position and fold forward comfortably, safely, mellow, mellow, nice and slow. We can breathe through the nose or the mouth. Candle breath works well. Shape in your lips like you're blowing out a candle. As does ujjayi breathing, where we squeeze the back of our throat. Like whenever we say a word that starts with H. Do that with open or closed mouth. Breathe through the mouth or the nose. Let's bring it on up. Do the other side. So just come out of here nice and safe. Let's extend the left leg. I'm gonna fold the right. Staying rolled to the left. Just want to make sure we're not rushing into this and twisting the knee. If we can get onto the floor more power to you. Remember, we can lift this leg and move it around, move, change where it sits on the floor. Practice doing that to help get you in tune with the muscles in your hip that govern this motion. They're the same muscles you use when you're walking, but a lot more thinking here. If we don't normally sit like this, well, once you're doing yoga every day, these kind of odd looking contortions will be normal to you because they help you feel normal, I mean, in a positive way.
but <laughs> getting back to the pose. Let's take that block. So we got both blocks next to us so we can lift on up and sit sitting bone down on that block and then get this one under the knee to protect you. Protect that knee. Putting this where it's most comfortable. Avoiding twisting of the knee. Good deep breath in. Let it out slowly. Ujjayi or candle breath. Finding our strap so we can reach forward. Hips are still active. Our hips are really never sleepy in any yoga pose. They're always ready for movement. Being engaged in the hips means they're ready to move even as we hold the position still. So we're folding forward. Our three angle forward bend, Trang Mukai Parapashimottanasana. We can do slow upward and downward motion, some bouncing. Remembering never to tug on the spine, never to force an extension of the back. Bring it up slowly. As you get used to this pose, you'll find it very inviting to stay in the pose a bit longer and enjoy the yoga buzz you get. Last one. We don't need our strap. We should have our blocks handy. That is the Kripalu yoga version of the hero pose or Virasana. Stacking the legs. Now this comes in time. Your foot might be way up here. Excuse me, your foot might be way up here. We may need to put that block underneath it. So that we can push down on the floor. But what that does is that, of course, tightens the quads and helps you be active in your hip. Practice lifting that leg up and down. Ultimately, the pose looks like this when we've done this a while. Again, not forcing a twisting of the hips or a twisting of the knees so before we rush into that. We have our block. Once again, we can put that block underneath and sit right up on it. And put the other block under your foot. The block's under the right foot. I'm sitting on my block. We might need two blocks to sit on. This just brings us higher up and reduces the amount of rotation required in the hips. Helps us protect the knees, never forcing your hands down on the legs, never, never. We want to be able to preserve this movement of the legs. The legs push into each other. They press into each other like I could take something and hold it there because the legs are pushed together. Eventually we develop range of motion. Maybe we can try bringing that foot down on the floor. This is going to happen over time. Set your own pace. Maybe you only have a few minutes to do yoga each day. Maybe you're only doing these more intricate poses once a week. Set your own pace. It's a bit different than training for a marathon or a bicycle race where you have very specific time targets you're trying to hit. Flexibility and mobility of your joints and the length of your muscles depends on so many things. 
that you're doing or not doing. And it'll take some time before we get to this point. So let's just review it on the other side. I'm going to bring the right leg on the bottom and stack the left leg on the top. Now we may not be here yet. We've never done it and we're not naturally flexible or done dance or something where we've done a lot of stretch exercises. Your foot may be hanging out up here. We do want it to connect to the ground. That's why I've incorporated teaching this pose with the use of our yoga blocks. In the past, there have been some teachers who say, well, if you need to use a prop, then you can't use the pose, you can't do the pose, wrong. Most of us crawled before we walked. It's part of the process, using those props. And there are countless examples in life. So connect to the ground using your block. Let's take that block out for a bit. We can get that block if we need to sit on the block. And we may need a couple of blocks. I'm small, one works fine for me. Some of us, we might need another block. We can also put a third block under here, if that's gonna make us more comfortable. A lot of options. Just play the video back. Review these tips. Take good care of yourself. We'll come out slowly, thoughtfully. Thank you for joining me today. Tune in on a regular basis. Subscribe to my channel. Make it nice and easy. Lots of free stuff. Feedback is welcome. Many thanks. Namaste.